Hello, everyone. I'd like to talk about modeling the COVID-19 epidemic. I'm Christoph Lambert from the Center for Global Health, Division Translational, Inf Translational Informatics, Department of Internal Medicine. I also head up the informatics core at the CTSC here. So this picture is, is as of a couple days ago when I pulled data and um, there's a lot of burning questions for modelers. How many infected are there? Especially given limited testing has taken place, how long will this epidemic last? What are the best and worst case scenarios? What policies are most beneficial? So we've all seen this map over and over and it just tends to show the cumulative information but uh, when you go behind it, you can actually retrieve the data from, from, from links on this website. And I'm going to spend a lot of time talking, or a little bit of time, talking about analysis I've done on that data. So the challenge in figuring out how many infected there are is really exacerbated by how variable COVID-19 testing is. It's not some broad random sampling. It's targeted towards people who have symptoms generally. Um, but what we can do that's pretty solidly recorded in general is look at death data and walk back 21 days. And if you're seeing a certain number of deaths now on average, depending on the mortality rate, for every death you see, there might be between say 33 and 100 infected three weeks ago. But remember also people do recover. So a lot of these graphs that keep showing cumulative rising amounts, eventually the active the active portion of the population tapers off as the system recovers. So South Korea has a well-managed scenario. I had to type in the data from the Korean CDC to get the testing, and you see how dramatic their testing has been, uh, up to 259,000 tests. But if you look at their death data, which is in black here, and you shift it back by 21 days to this orange line, and then you extrapolate out, you see it actually converges nicely to about what the, uh, the, the uh, cumulative case rate is. And <clears throat> if you look at, at that, uh, the, the first slide I show for New Mexico, a couple days ago, we were at 1,700 tests and 23 cases. So we may well be about here in our own response. Now, of course, Korea had this super spreader event that happened that really, you know, uh, caused a dramatic acceleration. Um, but <clears throat> from this point, there the first deaths appeared about 21 days later, and then plateaued, sorry, first deaths came 11 days later, and plateaued 21 days later on, on March 12th. So there's a second curve here showing actually the active cases, and it's, it actually is dropping here on this logarithmic scale um, on March 16th. 8236 total cases with 7,024 active, which is down from the peak of 7470. How long will it last? This is both a linear and a logarithmic scale of the same data, looking at the Chinese provinces besides uh, Hubei, which is what contains uh, Wuhan. We see really from the time things get rolling, you know, where there's a handful of cases to the peak, it's it's somewhere around three to four weeks and then uh, tapering off for another four or five weeks or so. Um, here is when the uh, Wuhan went on lockdown on January 23rd uh, and, and 48 days later, they, um, they actually uh, ended their, lockout, their lockdown. But it was really again in about four weeks or so by the time there, uh, when you take confirmed minus recovered minus deaths, where it plateaued. So the Hubei scenario, uh, which is one, and, and, and we're wondering what scenario we may face both as a nation as a state, um, was caught late, but un brought under control with aggressive uh, actions starting January 23rd. They maxed out in terms of plateauing uh, from 50,000 active cases and then it's down to 9,557 as of a couple days ago. Um, um, they uh, plateaued really 26 days after their January 23rd lockdown and they had about a 3% mortality rate. 
Again, if you shift left by 21 days of mortality curve, multiply or divide by 3%, you get this yellow curve, which actually nicely models uh, uh, what occurred. Here's a 1% rate, which would probably be overestimating the number of active cases. Now, the Italian scenario, um, and of course, these analyses are still just very preliminary uh, that I've done, but if you walk back the deaths and then you, you extrapolate out, and this is even you know, extrapolating with closing the gap a little bit, um, where, uh, but really, you know, when they started taking severe steps was only a few days ago, which is around here. So the reported um, numbers, which are in blue here, are way underestimating what's likely going on based on backing the deaths 21 days. So we could be right now having three to 5 million cases, depending on a scenario of three or 5% mortality. And we may see about 150,000 deaths uh, from Italy in the next three weeks, which is a scary uh, 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 scenario and one we don't want to, to have here, obviously. So are we gonna be more like Hubei or Italy in the, in the US, I think the ships already sailed for a South Korea scenario. We're actually at the Hubei levels at the time of lockdown, um, where both we and them are in the range of, we're now at 73 to 220 K infected. Um, and just based on what's already probably in the pipeline here, um, it's gonna require uh, 11,000 to 33,000 hospital beds at 15% hospitalization. You could take 5% of these numbers of 70 to 220,000 to figure out what we might be dealing with in ventilators. And in the US, we may well see 2,200 deaths in the next three weeks. However, there is time to act. Um, there's an informative vi video I'd encourage you to look at. Um, uh, a, a system dynamic model that looks at both policies and assumptions you know, the assumptions are like, what is the, uh, the R naught? What's the public health capacity? What's the hospital capacity? What's the fatality rate, both treated and untreated, which if healthcare is outstripped, we'll be getting an untreated fatality rate. And the takeaway is while all kinds of public health stuff's gonna be helpful, the real place to arrest things is reduction of social contact. Now we keep hearing this mantra, the risk is low, you know, for the average American that's kind of a tragedy to commons thing where the risk to all of us uh, is contributed by all these little low risks that, that go in an exponential feedback loop that can run away on us like it did in Italy. So um, there's another study uh, done by some folks in the UK. They did a policy analysis of various forms of, of distancing, uh, including closing schools and universities, which we've done uh, or at least, you know, most, uh, we're not closed at the university, but most students are, are, are not here. Um, isolation, home quarantine, and social distancing, especially focusing on the, the seniors uh, to minimize overwhelming our health system with those, can, can really uh, flatten the curve and reduce the number of cases, um, and can even get it very much under control if we employ all of these things. Um, but the, the bad news is the epidemic, while it can be suppressed, it'll likely be back with us next year. And so you can read this full paper at, at this link. And um, so finally, you know, can New Mexico approach the South Korea or the non-Hubei Chinese province scenario? The good news is we have early state response. Our schools are closed. Testing's been ramped up. Large group assemblies curtailed. Self-quarantining when sy symptomatic. Although, you know, that's largely voluntary, I think, at this time. Um, we still don't have all personal measures, such as lack of isolation and treatment infrastructure. Um, there's the potentially diminishing supplies of personal protective equipment. And there is a free flow of people in and out of the state. Korea, something they had um, that we don't have is continuous cell phone location tracing of every citizen when they cross paths with an infected person. So they, they had stuff in place from their last outbreak that we do not, we also culturally don't have the, the, the 
uh, familiarity with working with this. Finally, our state motto in Latin, I'll, I won't try to pronounce it, but it grows as it goes. And I'd like to encourage us all to, to have our, our response grow much faster than, than this outbreak goes. And as humans, we tend to underestimate exponential processes because our mind extrapolates linearly, hopefully looking at these logarithmic curves and potential futures gives you a sense of where we may be heading and what some of our best and worst case scenarios can be. Um, and hopefully we can do our best and be in the, in the, um, in, in the highest, in the best outcome category. Thank you.